Hi, it's me again, Ken, uh, doing my best of, best decade, the 1970s. Uh, th this time it's right at the beginning, it's 1970. As usual, if you want any comment, if you want to put any comments, feel free, bad or good. Any suggestions, your own opinion, whatever, that's great. If you like what you see, subscribe. Uh, this is uh, uh, 10 albums that uh, influenced me in retrospect because I wasn't buying albums in 1970 though. So as soon as I started buying albums in 1974, you start looking back. And these are the ones that really sort of affected me in a, in a positive way. Uh, I've got a couple of Babylon Enders that didn't quite make it after. So without further ado, we'll push on. Kicking off with... Um, um, What's that you saying? Yes, that's Simon and Garfunkel, no Bridge Over Troubled Water. I got a f funny little story. My father actually shouted up the stairs to turn this down. If he only knew what was coming a bit le later after this, he, he would. Oh dear. There you go. So we'll come to that in a minute though. This is Bridge Over Troubled Water, Simon and Garfunkel, oh, and I used to play it quite loud. Next up is another fantastic rock album. This is Morrison Holds Held by the Doors. Uh, Rodeo Spruce just turned me straight onto the doors, and that with weird signs in the score behind their um, compilation just made me love them. They're still one of my favorite groups. Uh, you know, what a track list in there is on there. Fantastic album, a great sleeve. Uh, so that's the doors, Morrison Hotel. As I said, these are in chronological order for going for the year as far as, uh, as far as I could. Uh, so forgive me if there's any mistakes. Uh, this is Black Sabbath. Uh, so if my father was um, shooting up the stairs at Simon Gaffer, can you imagine what he's doing when I put this on? <laughs> this is a this is where heavy metal comes together, I think, or hard rock, as it was probably called at the time. This is where it all starts. There, before that, there was um, uh, Dave Davis and the Kinks, where you really got me, and Blue Cheer, and there was a few other people knocked around, but it sort of coalesced you, and it all became clear what was going to go on in the future from this point I think for a lot of bands so that's Black Sabbath fantastic first track Black Sabbath on the album Black Sabbath by the band Black Sabbath you're going to get a better start than that I don't think from any group fantastic this is in Oxfordshire I do believe this but the mill and it's still uh, popular it was used in actually a film of uh, Eagle has landed if anyone's seen that film so next up is a live album by one of my favorite bands The Who this is live at Leeds. Uh, this is a, a triple LP, uh, half speed sort of mastered uh, deluxe edition, which I picked up for record fair. This is um, this is the whole concept. Uh, it was originally a single album, uh, concise and brilliant, uh, and it was astounding to me when I listened to this in later in the seventies. Fantastic album. Um, the better concert. So. In some people's opinion, is a live at all, which was released quite a bit later, and the band uh, sort of said, said things like that. But uh, this is this is seminal album from the 1970. Next up, getting to another uh, album that upset my father. You can, if you can believe that, that's Deep Purple in Rock. This is a, a, um, a cheapo Rio show on the Fame imprint. Um, which I bought later, uh, not having much pocket money and first, first wages, uh, to sort of um, get into the group. Uh, Child in Time just blew me away at the time, and it's a fantastic album all through. It's still one of my favourites. Just nudges Machine Head for me in some ways, probably because of the memories. Next up, another fantastic live album. We're halfway through the, the 10, I think, now. This is The Rolling Stones in Concert. Uh, this is Get Your Yeah Yeahs Out, Charlie on the front there. Um, never quite worked out where all that meant, but there you go. This is, uh, it was going to be a double album, and it was going to be Stevie Wonder and that like, Tina Turner songs on it, which I think appeared uh, in a deluxe edition later, which I've got somewhere. Uh, this is, um, this is fantastic. The band really at their peak there. So already two live albums, that's not bad going, is it? But two albums from this band as well, Black Sabbath, Paranoid. Uh, the cover never appealed to me until I, I, obviously I know a bit more about it now that it was really from War Pigs. <coughs> and this, this guy in the front is be a representation of a War Pig, I guess. Uh, and Paranoid was just, uh, they, they didn't quite have a, what they thought was enough to make up an album. So they 
threw together a quick song and the, there you are. Just shows what can be done when uh, when you got the will. <coughs> Excuse me. Next up is uh, coming down a bit from that. It's Tumbleweed Connection by Elton John. I really loved this album when I, when I caught up with it. Uh, it's, it's sort of a concept album, but it's a world best in some ways. Bernie Taupin's Great Love. Uh, and it's a fantastic cover. And there's the shades of sort of Crosby, Stills and Nash going on in here as well with the cover. I think that sort of um, Western vibe, I suppose. Uh, love song on there. It's a great song and a few others. <clears throat> Another band I caught up a bit later in the 70s, but went back and sort of hit this and couldn't believe how good it was for a first album. It's, it feels like it's thrown together as well, which is, I think is a, is the strength of it. So this is Hawkwind. Hurry on, Sundown is on you. Uh, and this is a fantastic album. Uh, it's more folky, I suppose, in the later work, but it's still all the, the seeds are all there. You can hear it. So that's uh, a great for it. Thank you, sir. And um, here we go. Alexa tried to butt in in the back there. Must have said something. This is uh, Lola, and this is um, the Kinks. Lola and the, what's it? Pell, Lola versus Pell and the money, money go round. I always get the uh, struggle with that one, remember it. And it's a great album. I'm a big Kings fan. Yeah, as soon as I heard you really got me, I was in, in with this group. And I went back and listened to this, and I love it. <coughs> Excuse me. So here we go there. There's a couple of other and there's another one by Elton. Obviously, this is uh, quite famous, and this is a brilliant album as well. Um, the Greatest Discovery is my favourite on here, and there's obviously your songs on there. And there's uh, India, Indian Sunset, I think it is. There, it's been sampled. But it's a great, great album. First, that first uh, big album. There was a couple of albums before that when it was only released later. The psychedelic album, and it's uh, this uh, Mama set uh, from George Harrison. Uh, I think unleashed all his pent up sort of frustrations on this, and it's a uh, this is a sort of box set version with some jams and stuff attached to it on CD two. Um, I always loved the album cut the box because it did come in a box at the time, and I did have it at one point, but I haven't got it anymore. I gave it away in the eighties, I think. Or, there you go. So that's my 1970s look. Look at the albums that influenced me that year. And I'll be along soon with another one. All the best, everybody.